Welcome back to the TV show tonight. The Biden White House is set to revise federal rules to address potential security risks from foreign owned apps, mainly TikTok. This comes after the Biden White House opted not to pursue a forced shutdown of the Chinese owned video sharing platform after such a move was pushed by the Trump administration. Under these new rules, federal oversight would be expanded to explicitly include apps that could be used by foreign adversaries to steal or otherwise obtain data. This means the U.S. Commerce Department could effectively bar apps it believes are deemed to have unacceptable security risks. Joining the show now to discuss more about this is Senior China Fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, Craig Singleton. Craig Singleton, welcome to the show. What is it about TikTok in particular that continues to raise a lot of concerns among government officials, members of Congress? Seems like every few weeks someone's releasing a statement that says... Uh, we should probably think twice before embracing TikTok. Well, I think this this particular announcement was a long time coming. And there were calls on Capitol Hill saying that the Biden administration was dragging its feet. But if we do take a step back, it's pretty clear that the Biden administration is taking a very serious approach towards addressing what's called Chinese techno-authoritarianism. And that was really evidenced even last month when they sanctioned 12 different Chinese biotech companies for supporting China's military and being involved in uh, human rights abuses against Uyghur Muslims. There are concerns about TikTok. Uh, There have been forensic analyses that have shown that the servers are vulnerable uh, to Chinese penetration because they're hosted in China. And so I do think that this latest news sort of builds upon the trend from last year uh, that we saw under the Trump administration, but also does continue to continue the conversation uh, that we need to address some of these particular loopholes, the regulatory gaps, and really have a better sense about how we control U.S. person data going into the future. So, Craig, I'm sure you have a lot of people that are watching who are saying, "Okay, I use TikTok. I scroll through the For You page. I'm down with the latest dances. At the end of the day, what data are they really going to give to the hands of the Chinese government? Like, at its worst, what are they going to do? They're going to see that I like to watch cooking TikToks. Like, do I really care that China China's officials have that information? I mean, help put this into better perspective with regards to what actually is at stake. What is the data? Sure. I think... We have to remember that in the 21st century, information is currency. And China has made it very clear that they intend to harness data, technology, and its people uh, to power the country's technological and military modernization. We've seen concerns about DNA from DNA companies where samples are hosted in China. And as we start to think a little bit about TikTok and the types of data that those types of apps collect, it's all about your preferences. It's all about your friends. It's all about your phone numbers. It's all about your emails. It's all about your contacts. And there are lots of potential applications for that. Not all of them are nefarious. But the biggest question that is really facing a company like TikTok is because of a Chinese national security law that was passed a few years ago, companies like TikTok and companies that host data in China can't say no when the Chinese government comes and says, give us your data. And it's that second part of the equation that we really don't know how some of this data could be manipulated, how this data could be used against us. Um, and I do think that there's probably a broader conversation to be had about the ethical and moral risks that we have when we use the Chinese platform or buy something from a Chinese company, especially when we know that a lot of these companies are actively involved in something called military civil fusion. And that's a Chinese strategy that's aimed at acquiring next generation technology, including through theft, to power the country's military modernization. We've seen already indications that AI companies that have been involved in facial recognition software like TikTok have been involved in the internment of Uyghur Muslims and modern day concentration camps. It doesn't get more real than that. And so there are questions to be had about increased transparency and how we apply standards to companies like TikTok. So ultimately, Craig, this would appear to sort of underscore and bolster the argument that people like Mark Zuckerberg have made in the past to lawmakers, which is, hey, your bad actors in the social media space could very well be foreign owned entities. Not us here at Facebook. We're a California, USA, red, white and blue company all the way, baby. That's what some of these companies have tried to say to encourage members of Congress to say, get off our backs. You got way bigger issues out there. It kind of seems like there might be something to that argument. I mean, is it inherently better for government officials to focus on foreign based apps with regards to a critical eye on national security concerns and maybe not be as critical of at least some American based companies, uh, at least in this conversation? 
I'm not sure it's mutually exclusive, but I think we can walk and chew gum at the same time. I think when it comes to foreign apps, we have to open our aperture and our discussion beyond China. There should be an agnostic approach to all foreign apps that are operating here in the United States, a clear set of standards that we judge them all by, whether they're from China, whether they're from France. It really doesn't matter. The government does have a role in protecting U.S. person data. I think the bigger question that we're seeing a lot around China is a lack of transparency. We're seeing it already that Chinese companies that want to be listed on the U.S. stock exchange need to open their books. We need to see who you get your funding from. Are you solvent? That's to protect U.S. investors. The same reasoning should be applied towards U.S. users of apps, whether it's TikTok or if you buy a Huawei phone or Mm. if you buy a Tesla and the battery was made by forced labor. I mean, we really do not know the answers to a lot of these critical supply chain questions and sort of the integrity of some of these systems. We just don't know. And so I do think that sort of raises important questions for us. And we need to build out some of that regulatory structure. Is this an issue where, and you're, I mean, you're down in DC, I'm, I'm in New York right now, but I usually live and work in Washington. Is there bipartisan cooperation on this? Because I do hear the Senator, the Senator Rubio's of the world, the Senator Josh Hawley's of the world, Josh Hawley's really been been going after this, especially on TikTok for quite some time. And here, if you got the Biden White House taking advantage of the moment, it would appear to me, Craig, as if maybe, dare I say, there's a little room of bipartisanship for Republicans and Democrats to, dare I say, see eye to eye, at least on this one issue. I would say on the China front, that's definitely the case. We see multiple bills working through Congress right now to increase our competitiveness and and future investments in semiconductors and research and development to take on the Chinese behemoth. And so anytime you sort of attach China to a potential bill, whether it's in the House or the Senate, you do see a a willingness on both sides to sort of come together, find common ground and see where they can push something forward. They're almost sort of trying to outdo each other on the, on the China front. Uh, and so whether that's where the flag can be planted and maybe they can start to build from that um, and sort of address some of these other structural issues that we see in the tech space, great. I think most taxpayers and most citizens would like to see some forward movement out of Washington. If this is an area where the two parties can come together, put together some common sense guardrails and to help inform users of these platforms about what's really at stake, which is really, I think, the big missing part of this equation, then I think we're all going to be for the better and you can build out those systems to sort of have longevity, to protect users. Ultimately, it comes down to your information, your knowledge. Uh, And those are sort of things that we need to start thinking about as everything becomes digitized and technology is the future. Craig, can the app be banned? You know, there are a lot of lawyers, I think, on both sides who are sort of still figuring that out. as you would be no no doubt surprised, you know, TikTok has a massive lobbying arm here in D.C., lots of lawyers. They hire former U.S. government officials to, to reach back and call in favors to, to kind of push and advance their interests. I think we don't necessarily want to make the conversation all about Chinese apps or TikTok even. There should be this agnostic approach where every foreign app that's available in the United States goes through the same clearing process. And it should be about transparency. Will this data be protected? Where will it be stored? Will host governments have access to it? How do we know? Um, we've heard from TikTok in the past that the data wouldn't be available to the Chinese government, that it's not stored on Chinese servers, only for that to be like to, for us to learn that's not true. So I do think there's reason to be skeptical here. Craig Singleton, 10 points for Teddy Roosevelt's man in the arena, by the way. They're on the wall over your right shoulder. And another 10 points for being on the show tonight. Craig is senior China fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Craig, thanks. Coming up on the show.